So this is the problem that we're going to discuss. You can go ahead and pause it on this so it's not so shaky. Okay, so the problem reads that there's a membrane of thickness A that's bathed on one side of a solution. So first of all, I want you to go ahead and draw out the problem every time you do. Try to work through something. So here we have a membrane, x equals 0 on this side, x equals A. And it says on the left-hand side, on x equals 0, you have a concentration of CS1. And on the right-hand side, CS2. And uh, at the very beginning, before T equals 0, it's achieved a steady state. So we'll say that CS2 has a concentration around around here. CS1 is up here. And through the membrane, it's reached a steady state between the two sides. So at time equals zero, the concentration is dropped to this point right here, which is C prime. And what the question is asking in part A is, first of all, we want to find a differential equation that's going to explain what's happening through this membrane. Um, since the, uh, at time equals uh, zero, the concentration of C prime is dropped. So to do that, we want to first look in chapter seven of your book. And there's a... Table 7.2 has the conservation relations for dilute solutions. And in this case, we just have rectangular coordinates. So if we write uh, from table 7.2, the rectangular coordinate conservation relations equation would be dCi dt plus, and you have all your velocity terms, vx dCi dx. So there goes all the velocity terms. You will see your diffusion coefficient times the concentration gradient. And you can't forget about the reaction term here. So this is your conservation relations equation that will be for rectangular coordinates. And now we can look at our situation and start to narrow down these, uh, this equation to something more simple. So in this case, we just have a membrane, and it looks like diffusion is only occurring in the x direction. Um, there's uh, no velocity here. And um, I think that should be about it. So we have no velocity occurring in any direction. So all these terms are going to go to zero. And all the diffusion is current just in this x direction here. So there's nothing going in the y direction and nothing going in the z direction. Uh, and there's uh, going to be no reaction term as well. So the equation is just simply dCi dt equals dIj. So fix second law without the reaction term. So this is the differential equation that they are asking for in part A. Um, the other part of part A is what is the boundary conditions for this membrane so that we can solve this differential equation. So as you can see, this differential equation is a partial differential equation uh, with concentration depending upon time as well as the position. So we're going to have uh, three conditions, one initial condition and uh, two boundary conditions. So first of all, the initial condition uh, would be when time is less than zero. And we want to find the initial condition for the membrane. <coughs> so it'll be uh, between zero and A, so within the membrane, is equal to so CI. It's going to be equal to the concentration over here, CS1 plus X over A, CS2 minus CS1. And so we can take a quick look if this makes sense or not. If at x equals 0, it'd be 0 over a, so this whole term would go around, go uh, disappear, and you have CS1. So that would be that point right there at x equals 0. So that makes sense. If we're at x equals a, x equals a would be 1 right here. You'd have CS minus CS1. These two would cancel out, and you're left with CS2, and you're left at that point. 
so that makes sense. So this is your first initial condition. Um, with time greater than or equal to zero, at x equals zero, you're going to have um, your concentration equal to C prime because it's dropped in half. And your other boundary condition, condition at x equals a, the ci is equal to cs2. And those are your, so these are going to be your boundary conditions, and this is your differential equation that the problem asks for. Okay, so how did we get that initial condition that I just showed you? Uh, uh, at t less than zero, ci equals cs1 plus x over a, cs2 minus cs1. So in the problem statement, it says that any time before uh, zero, that the through the membrane, the concentration has reached steady state. So if it's reached steady state, big second ball. This term goes to zero. So you're just left with this right here. And to solve that equation, remember that the generalized solution is ci equals ax plus b. So if we use our two boundary conditions that I said before, is that x equals zero, um, cs1 um, is the concentration with cs1 equals x equals zero, so this term is zero, so b is equal to cs1. So now let's plug in our other boundary condition at x equals a. So cs2 is the concentration equals a times little a plus cs1 because that's b. And now rearrange solvent for a, you get cs2 minus cs1 divided by little a. Now you've got your two constants, a and b. You can plug it back into this equation. And you have ci equals to cs1 plus x over a cs2 minus cs1. And that's what we got up here for our initial condition. OK, so this is the solution for part a. Here's your differential equation after uh, time is greater than uh, zero, trying to figure out what's going on in this membrane. And here are your boundary conditions and your initial conditions that you'll use to be able to solve this partial differential equation. Part B now asks for what are the non-dimensionalized uh, position, concentration, as well as time for this setup right here. So the position is eta and it will be x over the total distance a. That's your non-dimensionalized distance of position. Your non-dimensionalized concentration given by theta is your unknown concentration ci minus cs1, the left-hand side, divided by cs2 minus cs1. Finally, non-dimensionalized time is given by tau, and that's going to be equal to the time times the diffusion coefficient divided by the total thickness here, a squared. So we can do a quick check to make sure this is right. This is going to be your units are in seconds times centimeters squared per second divided by your thickness, a squared, so that's centimeters squared. So you see that these all cancel out, giving a non-dimensionalized time. 